Welcome back to Real Life Reviews and in this video we have in Bright Mango Citroen Pulse, as Nike would say, we have the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. Gosh, that's a mouthful. And we're going to be taking a look to see if this really is a game changer. In short, it might be for you or it might not be. And we'll try to explain what we mean by that. By using the term Alpha, Nike are clearly making a statement about this shoe. Alpha, the Greek first letter of the alphabet, a word synonymous with the best, the elite, strong, powerful. This is the Alpha shoe, or this is what Nike would like us to believe is the Alpha shoe. This is the production model of the shoe that Eliud Kipchoge wore to break the two hour marathon barrier. Now, is it going to help you break the two hour marathon barrier? Well, unless you're one of about three or four people in the world, no, it's not. But is it going to help you run a PB in your marathon, run quicker? Yeah, I think it is. Let's have a good look. The first thing you notice when you pick this shoe up, apart from the colour, is that it actually feels really light. This is a very light shoe. This is a size 8 UK. 42 and a half European, as Nike would put it. A lot of manufacturers size eight UK is 42 European, uh, but this is true to a UK eight. The, we've weighed this at 212 grams. Now that is very light. It is though marginally heavier than the Vaporfly Next Percent. So if that's really important to you, and we'll keep trying to compare to the Vaporfly, then it's very slightly heavier. I, I defy anyone to actually notice the difference when wearing the shoe though. So in terms of wearing this shoe, my first real comment is that it's an out and out runner's shoe. And I'm referring here to the opening that your foot goes in. It's a relatively small opening. It's a single piece opening. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, hopefully you can see there, there is no separate tongue. The, the opening is one piece and it is a matter of spending a little bit of time. I find getting your foot in sideways in and twisting is the best way to put this shoe on. It's not going to be a quick chain shoe. So for the triathletes of us, you're not going to want this shoe for Olympic sprint, super sprint and going down that end. A lot of, a lot of long course triathletes, Ironman distance and possibly half iron distance. We like to wear genuine running shoes rather than tri shoes. And this is a very real possibility. As a marathon shoe, just spending those extra few seconds putting this shoe on, you might determine that this is worth it. So an out and out runner shoe simply by getting the thing on your feet or long course triathlon. First impressions from running? Well, this shoe actually takes heel strike as well as mid to four. So where the Vaporfly was really a mid foot strike, mid to four foot strike shoe and didn't respond quite so well to a heel strike. If you're a heel striker, you will prefer this shoe. And the Alpha Fly is very definitely better than the Vaporfly at, at, at dealing with that, that strike. A bit more about the comfort of this shoe and that's to do with the stability. I felt on the Vaporfly a little bit unstable. And yes, I got used to it. And when you ran with it, it was fine. This shoe is much more stable from the start. When you compare the two, it's, it's very definitely wider in the forefoot across here and also wider in the mid. So what you've got is you've got a, a bit more of a stable platform. And again, making the comparison with the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly is a more stable shoe. No, no question about it. So sticking with the sole, another little plus point is this little hole in the four of the sole. And what that enables us to do is it actually enables us to see the carbon plate. And you can also see the carbon plate just underneath here. And you can tap on it and, and, and get the harness. I like that just from an aesthetic point of view, but it does have a scientific benefit as well. And that is by having this hole here, then the foam is an, it's allowed to compress a little bit more efficiently because not only is it able to compress to the outer of the sole, but it's allowing some compression on the inside as well. So it's, 
it's helping a more uniform and even compression of this fantastic foam that we have in the sole. A teeny advantage of this as well is that we're, we're cutting out a small amount of weight and there are tiny areas where we gain a bit of weight in this shoe so shedding a bit of weight is always a bonus. As I said before it is fractionally heavier than the Vaporfly. Now the carbon plate in this shoe or the fly plate as Nike like to call it is very definitely one of the stiffest on the market and the front of the plate is anchored so it's and you can see a line here where it's anchored and what that means is that the the zoom x phone foam underneath it when your forefoot hits the ground that compresses underneath the actual plate itself so that when you get the stepping in and this really is quite stiff for me to try and do this with my hands you get a compression downwards which then once released you get the plate and the foam pushing off and pushing away so it's quite a clever little plate and if i just turn it around and it it acts in a bit of an s shape so you have the foam beneath it here the plate comes around and then comes back up again up here so it's 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 really very clever and that's what all the uh, the hype has been about and the stiffness of this plate changes and varies depending on the size of the shoe so the smaller the shoe size the more flexible it is and if you think about it that makes sense a bigger person with a bigger foot size is going to have a greater weight and force in general coming down on the shoe whereas a small light person running in maybe a size 6 UK is going to need the, sh the plate to be a little bit more flexible so it's not the same stiffness carbon in every shoe it varies from shoe to shoe. Sticking with the forefoot we have our zoom pods here our airpods zoom airpods so one on one side if I turn the shoe around and one on the other side and again these are quite progressive the, the quicker and the harder you run the more you feel the impact of these actually working compressing and releasing if you're just walking in these shoes you don't get the same effect but the quicker you go you certainly feel this spring sensation as the foot is leaving off you've got this extra pop as you go it's really quite noticeable staying with the the bottom of the shoe here's the outsole in black it's a relatively thick outsole not massively so but relatively thick and reasonably hard wearing the outsole doesn't exist in the middle of the shoe and more to that in a moment and there's a sort of dip up so where there's no sole hopefully we're not touching the ground but at the rear we do have further outsole two strips on the side here and they're in white and if I try to just get the camera to, to look at that we you might just see there's a little indentation of white there so we actually have outsole there now this is great if you're running on roads and pavements if you're running a race that might have a little bit of, of off track you've got to be really careful because what you've got is you've got the exposed foam the zoom the X here that stones can actually get at and you can damage if you're not careful so again a bit of a weight saver here is we've got sole at the forefoot and we've got sole two little strips in the heel or in the rear of the shoe so heading towards performance here well this shoe really did strike a balance for me it felt really cushioned and bouncy without feeling squishy and, th and that's the the holy grail of running shoes particularly for us older runners and we're thinking of protecting our knees and a lot of our running is trail running one of the things I would say about this shoe is it's enabled me to run back on pavements on hard ground and not feel like I'm damaging my joints at all or or hammering my joints so it's got that holy grail of being cushioned but giving you the responsiveness that you want cushioned and bouncy yet still efficient so really really good what I did notice about this shoe which was impressive was how it appears to me and this might have something to do with my running style and using other shoes and how I don't run 
in the right style for them. But I found that the, the carbon plate, the midsole foam and the AirPods, as I was operating in the shoe and running, they worked really well together. I, I, it just felt like a seamless transition and everything worked well. So even if I was deliberately running, heel strike, which isn't natural for me, although when I'm tired and sometimes, I, yeah, I'm going up a little bit uphill and I can be lazy then, but heel strike, heel to forefoot, really good. But boy, if I was midfoot striking and running and running well, or well for me, this was, it was seamless, it was lovely. And I, at the same point, whilst it's not a shoe designed for, for real traction, the tr it was good enough and it was good in wet and dry on the pavements and the roads. We can't though leave it there and only talk about the sole, we must come back to the upper. And this is Nike's new generation of fly knit, the, the atom knit that's on the top of this shoe. It's, it's more breathable than the previous, it's lighter, it uh, repels liquid better, apparently. I, I can't say I've made a scientific test on that, but it apparently repels liquid better. And it's slightly less stretchy though. Now, Nike say they've, they've and I quote, steamed and stretched this Atom Knit first before fitting it to the shoe. So that's why it's slightly less stretchy. <clears throat> what that means is that you get a really good lockdown uh, an excellent lockdown. Um, and the fitting, once you've got it on your, your foot, is superb. I, I haven't worn a running shoe that is better. It's snug, but still roomy for your toes. And that's the wider toe box that I like. There is no real cushioning around most of this upper. If I tip, you'll, all you'll see in there is you'll see a little bit on the heel round there. And quite frankly, that's all you need. It's a, it's a lovely little lock-in with the shoe and you don't need any more. Now, the only thing I would mention, and I, I must admit I haven't found this, but I've spoken to a couple of people who have, is because there's no cushioning, depending on how the height of the shoe is to your, your foot and your ankle, if you're a barefoot runner or a runner with very low socks, you might feel a little bit of rub from the shoe. Now I've run in these barefoot and I've run in them low sock. I don't have an issue with it at all. I'm just saying it's something that one or two people have mentioned. So are there any actual bad points to this shoe? Well, physically, no there aren't. However, it's a very expensive shoe. It's right up there. And that is it's going to be out of reach for, for many, many runners. And for me, if there is another almost sort of flip side bad point, it's that I've almost exclusively I run on trails because of part of my age, my joints, the amount of exercise I've done in the last however many years. And the problem with this shoe for me is it's enabled me to run back on pavements and roads and feel comfortable doing it. If you've got the discipline to shut this shoe away for competitions only really, once you've, you've worn your feet in and maybe done 15 or 20 miles and it's comfortable, if you've got that discipline, that's great. But the problem I found is I just wanna wear this shoe. And with a lifespan of the foam and it, its quality of being in the region of 150 miles, maybe 200 miles, it's an expensive shoe to be using for just training. And I just can't stop wearing it. I love it, but that's kind of a plus and a minus. So final conclusions. Well, it's almost impossible not to wear this shoe if you've got it. It's a lovely, lovely shoe to wear with a great feel, stability, and you just feel like you're running quicker. Um, you are running quicker generally speaking, same power input. If you use power and use a foot pod like Stride, then you will run quicker with the same power. I would say it's the Alphafly is actually more suited to a broader range of runners than the Vaporfly, uh, purely by the fact that it takes a heel strike runner as well as midfoot strike, forefoot strike. So from that perspective, this shoe will be more attractive to more people than the Vaporfly. The Nike. Air Zoom, Alpha Fly, 
next percent. To me, it's a game changer. I really love this shoe. And if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and in the description down below, there's a link to Wiggle. And lots of the, the kit that we review on this channel, you can get there. And if you use that link, well, the channel just gets a tiny proportion, you get some great deals, and that tiny proportion that the channel gets helps keep us going. If you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the little picture just down there. There's a link to our website with more affiliate links down there. And if you want to watch a review of the Hoka Ona Ona Speed Goat 4 trail shoe, that's just up there. And similarly, maybe the ASICS Gel Nusa Tri 12, that's just up there. Thank you so much for watching.